Okay. Are you ready? Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and we're going to break down some iconic scenes from Jackass. What can I do for you? I was partying last night with some frat guys. I passed out. I must have fallen down and broken something because I haven't been able to walk right since. We're going to take X right now, okay. to be sure. This is comfy. Hold your breath. Don't move. Well, the hardest thing to do was to find talent for that bit. Because yeah. that bit was written for somebody, and then somebody didn't want to let their dad down, and so we had to find somebody else. And right. luckily, Ryan was there, and he's like, this idea is too good, man. Find somebody to do it. And if nobody else will do it, I'll do it. And that's all I heard, is I'll do it. <laughs> so. Right. Who, whose idea was it to put the toy car in a condom in order to get it up Ryan's butt? That's, that's a good idea. It was, yeah, I don't know, because that, that was the good way to pull it out, even though we didn't know what was going to happen. We did not know. We were warned by uh, multiple safety people that getting it up there is not the problem. Getting it to come out is going to be the problem. Out. But some genius decided, figured out in, in our group, right, to, to well, put luckily, the car into a condom. Well, luckily, good old Ryan was... Loosey goosey. <laughs> yes, <laughs> came right out. <laughs> What's that? I have no idea. That's not part of you. That's something extra. I would have known if I ate that. No, you, you won't be able to swallow that. Oh man, Ryan is so funny. Like he's so naturally funny. That, that, that's one of the things I miss so much. Not just... worried about looking cool, like just, like for that, just taking one for the team, especially at that time. Now, you know, I think everyone's gone, done so much stuff where they, they're not worried about their pride. That's true, you gotta put it in the context of when we yeah, shot At the that. time, you know, yeah, yeah. It was like a pretty radical out. idea at the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> he was also very comedically grumpy too, which was great. Yeah. 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 And the, the, the improv he did, but just, just making up the story on the fly of what happened to the nice doctor who is really only concerned about his safety and, and his moral dilemma. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh, yeah. So his, his reputation. And his reputation. Yeah. And his reputation. Yeah. 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 Well, and right. are these people really your friends? God damn it. You alright? Yeah, hold on. What do you mean, hold on? Oh, the bull's not gonna hold on. Oh, the way. God damn, these bulls are strong. The Toro Totter all, already existed, and we were doing the the Yak Charge, which I had seen in the cartoon. And, and did Gary LaFue suggest bring yeah. up the Toro Totter? Yeah, he brought up. We, we didn't know about this, and then we saw footage of it, and it seemed like a good idea based on the footage we saw. Yeah, and you know what? It did turn out to be a good idea. Yeah, I, I'm really scared of bulls, but I was like, I got to be a part of this. Right. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, man. The craziest thing about that bit, and you don't see it in the way it's edited, is that we got it. Like, he got drilled into the, Knoxville got drilled and crushed by the, the bull, and he came out pretty unscathed. I mean, he was banged yeah. up pretty hard. And we're talking, and, he, and, and Knoxville's asking me, hey, did we get that? I'm like, yes, we got it. He's like, I'm not sure, man. I'm like, I don't know if we got it. It's like, the camera's still in place? I'm like, yes, but we got it. And he's like, okay. And then he just jumped back in the ring. And the bull, they hadn't wrangled that bull yet. And he jumped back on the teeter-totter, and then the thing really went to town. Oh, God, yeah. Do you, that was do you not, yeah. remember doing that? Like, I, I don't remember like, doing that. could have backed him into it like, so bad. He got bad. pinned in there. Just, just started, he, just, we went into the worst place. Yeah, I, don't, I do remember my leg went down in between the You got stuck plank. in there, and it was just pressed. I thought you were going to break your feet. If, really if it would have hit my leg then, it would have been just a 90-degree oh, break. Yeah. <laughs> you ever been run over by a car and then rerun over by the car? <laughs> That's what it kind of feels like. 
You ready, Tito? No. Steve-O wanted to be pushed off a bridge in the porta potty, right? But but Jeff said, "Why don't you go up?" Yeah, it was initially supposed to fall off of a bridge, and then they changed it. It was gonna be a bridge catapult. on a bungee, so it was gonna bounce up and down. Right, and it was just absolutely genius to change it to where it shoots up, because then the poo comes out at the apex of the launch. I mean, it's just so epic. The problem was, is that OSHA which is like the regulatory safety stuff, had a rule against like being covered in human feces. So they actually found a company which sells dog poo, and as much dog poo as you want. And the name of that company was We Do Do Do. <laughs> and they bought enough dog poo to fill up a porta potty. The best thing about that bit though is that Steve O was so concerned about safety, he made sure he had the goggles on, <laughs> he got the earplugs, he pinched his nose, he had it all figured out to where nothing, no poo is getting on him. It's gonna just pass over him. And then the first thing he does as soon as that poo starts coming up is he just screams. <laughs> <laughs> Open his and, mouth. I mean, you can just watch at yeah. least a big gulp worth of just dog and some human cameraman. Uh, Knoxville said when we played the footage back, he said, it's a good thing your mouth was so wide open, Steve. Otherwise, that poo might have hit you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you can almost smell that stunt, though, on even watching it on camera. Oh, my God, because it was so bad. That so the, bad. The poop we had was so rancid, like when it old poop. it went up and then it New shook poop. and all this rain. But that's what we didn't anticipate like, was how so it was going to disperse. Poop. And we just got covered. It was like a torrential downpour. It was of just foul. Shit it was, water. Yeah. It, it, it kind of turned into a lard ass scene from Stand By Me. Yeah. It was, totally <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the greatest yeah. things I've ever seen. And the best is like he's in this five point harness that he has no idea how to get out of it. <laughs> so he's trapped <laughs> in this like. <laughs> container and just waiting and luckily Ryan was the only one who knew how to undo the damn right. thing. And then you just came after everybody you could. Right. For I just Googled cool. the hardest punch ever recorded. His punch is the equivalent of being hit by a Ford Escort at top speed. Okay. Why well, you don't need to read that now. <laughs> Francis Ngannou was amazing. He was so fun to shoot with and God, he literally hits like a truck, right? It's he is the, the most powerful punch ever recorded yes. in human history. <laughs> the Guinness World Record. <laughs> and I'm a big UFC fan, so when I found out that Francis Ngannou was coming to the set to punch Aaron in the nuts, I, I, I wanted to volunteer. I actually said, oh, dude, let me get this bit. Let me get this. Let me have Francis punch me. And in hindsight, I'm so glad that I didn't <laughs> step into that because it wasn't just Francis Ngannou. I mean, it was it test after test after test. And by the time that was done, I could not have been more grateful that I was not the one doing the cup Except test. you might have been smarter about some of the, like, for some reason, we left it up to Aaron to pick the cups and the jocks. <laughs> <laughs> and he was picking these, like, blown out jocks up so the thing was kind of dangling. And he, Wearing them upside down. He had down. it upside <laughs> down. I don't know why. I don't I mean, know like, why. He picked a super flexible one for the pogo stick. <laughs> yeah. So that, like, let it just yeah. slip off and pinch his scrotum to the ground. Like Bless Aaron him. was the perfect guy for that. Like, yeah, you know, was. that bit was, was written for Knoxville. It was supposed to be Knoxville redoing the cup test. But uh, he had a hernia surgery right before we started shooting. So the doctor said, no way can you. And so that one got passed, and Aaron was the natural backstop that it landed at. Got to be over, dude. I think we're all the way finished. We're through. Stick a fork in it. I don't know that we've accomplished everything we've set out to do. I don't even think that was a thought, was it? Yeah, I don't think we set out to do anything aside from make each other laugh. There yeah. was no grand plan in this. It's an ongoing experience of having fun yeah. with your friends. Right. But then again, the other, on the other hand, we could never have imagined that we would have accomplished what we did. And when I found out that Knoxville wanted to make a fourth movie, 
I thought it was really scary to kind of jeopardize everything that we had built, everything that we had gotten away with. And we recklessly rolled the dice again, we got lucky again, and we made this movie that's just so epic that it's really a, a, a good spot to be in. We made our own luck, Stephen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think, yeah, accomplish what we meant to accomplish with making a, a movie that will make people laugh and really happy. What did you guys do to Eric? Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. You still got those million dollar teeth, that's for sure. <laughs>